supported us. Oh, look. oh, thank you. Thank you. I got that. Excellent. Whoever started the recording, I thank you. Look, that's a picture of me um, <laughs> that Jason must have taken. Um, or maybe or maybe Melissa took it back. Uh, yeah, I think anyway. it was, may have been Deborah, and then it got passed to us, but we were like, this is appropriate place for it. So, <laughs> <laughs> so there I am. Um, anyway, um, they're going to talk just a little bit about um, Planet B and about um, what they're doing in Philadelphia and um, uh, share uh, some of their information. Um, then we'll come back and uh, we have a few announcements to make, but we're just, this is the first time we've tried to do an, a live uh, meeting at all in three years. So we're a little bit uh, we're, uh, confused. <laughs> um, but take it away, Jason and Melissa. Great, thank you so much. So, um... Yeah, this is our Beekeepers and Education Certification Program that we're about to share with you. Um, my name is J Dr. Jason Graham, um, the Dr. J to the kids, um, and or you know just Jason is fine. Um, but I, I, my background is I went to University of Delaware where I studied entomology um, and wildlife conservation, and I first opened my my very first hive of bees with Dewey Karen, uh, who was my professor there. I went on to University of Florida where I worked uh, in the honeybee research and extension lab. Um, while I was there, I was a research assistant. I also was serving as an advisor to the uh, University of Florida Master Beekeeper Program. Um, so uh, that's kind of you know where my background is. I also went on to University of Hawaii. I taught there for a while while I was working with the endangered Hawaiian yellow-faced bee. Um, and I'll talk a bit more about that next month for our meeting about native bees. Um, and I'm here with Melissa. So Melissa, you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Um, so my name is Melissa Morazis. I am the Philadelphia uh, Planet B based STEM teacher. Um, prior to my first year with Planet B, uh, this is my first year with Planet B, I was a school district teacher um, for nine years and had the privilege of working in the math department across various schools in the city. Um, but even kind of before my my road took me down uh, in math, uh, which actually was a subject I failed repeatedly as a student. So um, I kind of expanded my my skill set uh, leading up to this point. But I was able to work as an educational consultant um, in various countries uh, in India was my first experience and I audited their English and Hindi language programs. Um, I had an experience working um, under a Fulbright fellowship and was able to develop professional development series workshops uh, at a university in Madrid. Um, and presently, while I've found myself really in a, in a sweet spot in education, I am a master gardener trainee through the Penn State Extension, which kind of is a, a really lovely intersection between the work I get to do with bees uh, through education and interactions with the public, but then also working um, and getting my hands dirty with, you know, IPM and, you know, uh, the best pollinators, uh, and the plants to, you know, lure them to the garden. So um, I'm in a a really great spot here. All right, Jason, let's see if I can handle talking and clicking at the same time. <laughs> Dr. J, you got this oh, one. And I got to unmute myself there. <laughs> okay, so yeah, uh, so welcome beekeepers. We're really excited to talk to you all. Um, Beekeeping is near and dear to our hearts. We, uh, you know, we have hives um, scattered around Pennsylvania and California, um, and we are working with kind of programs in other states as well. Um, but uh, excited to share with you what we're doing with Planet Bee Foundation and, and see if we can invite you to join us. Um, so we can move on to the next slide. We need like a, oh dear, oh gosh, a word. We need a word for <laughs> next slide. Next slide. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, beekeepers in education. This is just a quick overview. Um, we just wanted to introduce ourselves, who we are, what, kind of what our program is, and then talk about the beekeepers in schools program um, and potential mentorship program that we'd be rolling out soon. So next slide. Um, so our mission, you want to take this, Melissa? Sure. Um, so we do a lot of different educational and interactive experiences uh, that kind of support our mission, but basically we want to kind of change that mindset that people 
almost like so fervently embody, which is like this fear of bees. Um, so kind of all of our lessons, interactions with the public, um, both in person and remote based are all about like, how do we dismantle uh, preconceived ideas about bees um, and kind of unpack the uh, experiences that people have with them. Um, many of those experiences kind of being informed, um, you know, by misinformation and whatnot. Great, and here's kind of a little bit about Planet Bees history. So Deborah and Bill started this as a grassroots organization. Um, they went into schools because they had kids in schools. And so as you guys know, as beekeepers, a lot of times schools are gonna say, oh, your parent is a beekeeper. We'll see if they can come in and do a talk about it. Um, so they, they began doing this and then um, they became a, uh, Planet B Foundation was registered as a nonprofit 501c3 in 2015. Um, since then, they've gained uh, many different corporate sponsors, which help us to go into schools for free. Um, and the Planet B Foundation kind of has pivoted to provide support through hybrid program, hybrid programs, and live remote lessons since 2020. Um, so just to give you a, a little deeper dive of who we are, so we're essentially a growing nonprofit um, focused on expanding knowledge and influencing behavior around conservation, STEM, and sustainability uh, through using the amazing teacher that is the, the bee, um, honeybees and native bees uh, as well. Um, and then we also like to highlight their robust contributions to the environment. So the goal is to ultimately create a green-minded generation across the country. Uh, but for me personally, as someone who was born and raised in Philadelphia and who was taught in Philadelphia, and I'm very acquainted with kind of the limitations that this city has, um, I recognized how nature starved a lot of our children were. So even to have an experience, a positive experience with a bee, um, a lot of them don't other than, you know, though they might be those things that come out uh, at a block party. So uh, really approaching our instruction and my instruction in this area specifically kind of through that lens, um, my personal goal is to kind of help these, you know, nature starved communities um, have a, a better perspective based on knowledge and research. Oh, this is me too. Uh, so just to kind of highlight some of the entities that we've collaborated with, our active participation um, kind of in a remote space with some of these uh, with some of these partners has been a little bit longer standing. But as far as like getting our hands dirty and getting uh, hitting the ground running, we've kind of been newer to the scene because you know we are expanding. So one of our newest endeavors that we are so excited to participate in is the garden or the garden electric or the garden show that's happening in March. Um, Jason's going to fly out. He's based in California. So he's going to be flying out and um, offering his expertise with some of our other members of our team. Um, we're going to be working in the kids cocoon area, which I find really exciting. We've done some programming at the free library of Philadelphia. Uh, we went to the farm show actually last week and we not only were able to check out the butter sculpture, but we were actually able to like open live bee cocoons for people. So I had three of them hatch and for kids to like look at a bee that could crawl really gently on their hand without a fear of being stung was something that brought me a lot of joy. Uh, we've gone to the Iron Pigs games. We are working more closely with the Insectarium up in the Northeast, which is an incredible space if anyone has not had the privilege to go there yet. We are active in our contributions to in the Philly ecosystem, the STEM ecosystem, um, but specifically the STEM Equity Collective. And I had the privilege of um, co-facilitating or co-running a uh, an event at the Ronald McDonald House with, with you know, Dave, the, the leader here. So that was a, an amazing experience for me to work alongside one of the members of the guild and kind of get reacquainted, uh, more acquainted rather with the guild and their work. Um, so as we're building out our network of partners, we've done a good amount of in-person lessons and in-person events all across Pennsylvania. Um, We've done a work with a lot of the YMCAs. We've worked with libraries even outside the Philadelphia area, um, but we are noticing a lot more schools um, in Pennsylvania via virtual lessons or reaching out for information about native bees and honeybees and you know, asking to get our content and our lessons in their classroom, which is really exciting. 
So I'm based out in California, um, and these are some, I guess some of these are in California, some of these are nationwide companies um, or organizations. So really it's uh, our corporate partnerships that help to make it so that we can go into schools at no cost to the school. Um, so this is, you know, educators may not have a big budget to be able to bring in some outside entity to talk about bees inside of their classroom. Um, but luckily we have partnerships with you know, the giant company there in uh, Pennsylvania. Uh, we work with Google here in California. Um, we've worked with Whole Foods and kind of, oh, these are just some of the partners. We're at, we have hives at Stanford University. Um, we're working with native bees with a, a group called Crown Bees. It's out of Washington. Um, so uh, these corporate sponsors kind of help us to be able to extend our program into schools at no cost and, and community organizations as well. Um, and so this kind of brings us to this beekeepers in school program. Um, so uh, what this plan, the plan is Planet Bee Foundation is developing a series. It is going to be monthly webinars. Um, these will be live and, you know, synchronous. So you can kind of log in at the same time that I'm talking and we could have a conversation. They will be, you know, kind of interactive. So you'll be able to, you know, kind of enjoy that. Or if you're not able to sign in at the time that the live webinar is going on, they will be recorded. So you can go back in later and watch it at your own leisure. Um, and then we would have evaluations. Of, uh, so after the webinar, you have an opportunity to do a quick evaluation to see what your knowledge gains were from that, from that webinar. Um, and then at the end of the 12 uh, webinar series or the, the end of the year, we would have a certification program where you can actually demonstrate those achievements of what you've learned and, you know, be a kind of a Planet B Foundation educator uh, certified and be able to kind of run a program in a school um, with all of Planet B Foundation's resources and um, the, our, our kind of uh, work with us um, continuously, we would be able to mentor in that program. Um, so we would provide training and materials to teach in the classroom. Um, it's basically a partnership or could lead to a partnership with a school. Um, so as a beekeeper, this could be, you know, something that you could charge for uh, and, and have an extra income. Um, you would be able to build lessons out in the classroom and you'd have continued support and guidance from our Planet Bee educators. And this is just kind of a list of what we are having for our units. So like in March, we is going to be our first program module. And that's going to be basically an intro to the program. I'll share the syllabus and the uh, the scope and sequence and all the materials. So you, you know what you're, you're getting into. Um, in April, we would be covering honeybee and native bee biology. May, beekeeping basics, um, kind of the parts of the hive, tools and techniques. In June, we'd be going over the hive invaders, pests and pathogens of both honeybees and native bees. In July, we're talking about honey harvest and tasting, and you can optionally, you could order a flight of honey to have delivered to you. Um, and you could do a virtual honey tasting with us, just like we do with uh, Equinix and, and um, Epic Games and some of the other, you know, co corporate organizations. Um, in July, we'll, so that's our honey tasting. And then in August, we're having kind of other products of the hive that we're going over. Um, wax, mead, queens, royal jelly, things like that. Um, in September, pollen and pollination. So we talk about pollen, the, the importance of pollen for the bees, for us, uh, for the plants and the pollination services that you could offer as a beekeeper. In October, we have a bit about native bees, citizen science and conservation. In November, beekeeping in the classroom. So this is where we're kind of diving into, you know, clearances and waivers and things like that, kind of what logistically you might need as a beekeeper to get a good kind of educational program set up with, a, with your local schools and partnerships. Um, in December, we get into more tools and resources. So these are some of the activities we do with our classes, um, stewardship activities. It could be, uh, you know, how we use the observation hives or the specimens or this native bee read program, which we're excited to share with you. In January, um, is kind of more engaging with the school and developing uh, an Adopt-A-Hive program or, um, you know, getting your memorandum of understandings together for the school, um, honey harvests, and, and kind of scheduling with that school for a, a more comprehensive program. 
And then in February, we have our final assessment and certification awards. Um, this is, I guess, for each person that enrolled in the program, um, we're going to look for a recorded presentation. So you can kind of share with us um, what your presentations look like, a little 15, 20 minute presentation. And we could give you feedback on that about, you know, where you did great and where we think there might be room for improvement. Um, and we have a practical exam as well with this. Okay. Um, and then just looking forward to the fall of 2023, um, we are, hopefully, uh, we would get some interest in members of the Philadelphia Bee Guild who would potentially do the uh, beekeeping in schools program um, that potentially would like to maintain uh, a collaboration by doing a mentorship with a local high school student. Um, so essentially, this is kind of what the timeline looks like uh, beginning in the fall of 2023. So we would re review applica applicants for the mentors, and then we would also uh, do our, our due diligence and making sure that we partner uh, mentors with a mentee that has not only like alignment in goals, um, but also has the uh, like proximity and the ability to get to the mentee, uh, or to the mentor rather, and then also um, if there are any interests that the mentee has around like, you know, something more entrepreneurial, that would be something that's super helpful um, for a lot of our high school students that are enrolled in these sort of like entrepreneurship classes. Then after that, you would be matched with um, your mentee. And then we would provide training, which includes a scope and sequence and support for a positive mentor mentee relationship. So that's in the pipeline for fall of 2023. Yeah, so we're excited to work with you all. Um, and if there's, you know, anyone that's interested in, in helping out with these programs or being involved in them in any way, you know, please reach, a, reach out to us. Um, I, I can open the floor up for questions. I don't want to take too much time. I know we have a couple other speakers um, also going to be going on after this. And I did want to just share, these are kind of our QR codes. So if you're interested in this beekeepers in education, there's a just a quick registration form so that we're able to um, keep the communication lines open and get you information as the program is uh, opening and rolling out. Yeah, why don't we, just to honor everyone's time, Jason, why don't, if there's any questions for us, we can just respond to them in the chat. Sure, yeah, that sounds great. And then uh, maybe we could share this uh, presentation with David and, you know, you can make it maybe make it available to the guild. Yeah, absolutely. And then also, Jason, just to um, go back to the beekeepers in the classroom program, just to clarify, we are opening that up to just beekeepers across Pennsylvania in Philadelphia or the country. That's, that's correct. So this is normally, now I finally got my video, but I'm on sideways. So I'm gonna stop that for a second. <laughs> I don't know how that happened, but anyways. Um, so yeah, this is normally gonna be like a 200, we're, we're thinking this is value of like about $250. Um, and that's what the registration would be out, you know, normally, uh, but because Giant is covering um, Philadelphia. We're able to go into schools for free in Philadelphia, and we really want to start this partnership with the Philly Bee Guild. Um, we'd like to offer this, you know, to y'all for free, uh, so, you know, at no cost to you. If you're interested in joining in this training and things like that, um, you may see that it's, you know, listed as $250 uh, for outside of the state of or outside of the city of Philadelphia, you know, other bee guilds, they may be charged um, or, you know, outside the state of Pennsylvania or, you know, in the future, we may need to charge for this just to make sure we can keep it rolling sustainably. Um, but for now, for the Philly Bee Guild, it's, it's no cost. So um, yeah, please uh, join us. Thank you. Thanks. I have a question for Jason. Yes. Have you made any connection with the Mount Diablo Beekeepers Association in Walnut Creek? I have, thank you. Yes, I, I'm, I'm actually working on trying to get, get become a part of that B Guild. Um, yes, I appreciate that. Thank yeah, you. yeah, it's very close to me. And uh, I, I have reached out to them once or twice. I'm kind of looking for when their next meeting is and I will be sure to try to attend. Excellent. So um, any other questions either from the virtual world or from uh, the room? So I think um, so I think this is a, a, a great opportunity for um, anybody here. I mean, I think this is a it sounds like a problem. Um, and uh, I don't know if anybody is Omi on there. I guess not. Anyway, uh, thank you, Jason. Thank you, uh, Melissa. 
Um, we really appreciate it. And uh, thanks for your presentation. Yay. Thank yeah. you. Thank All you right. guys. I hope to learn more about some of you. I'm, I'm trying to do the, the intro to beekeeping course, Dave. So I need to, I need to sign up. That hasn't started yet, right? No, it, it starts on, it'll, the first session will be February 11th. All right. All right, good. So um, I just want to uh, say hello to everybody. This is the first time we're here in person um, in almost three years. Uh, so this is really a, a momentous uh, event. Um, we, the, 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 those of us here are in the basement of St. James School, which is in uh, Allegheny East neighborhood. Um, they're a long time uh, partner of ours. We used to have our meetings here before the pandemic. And there we're coming back together and we're gonna try to go forward with meetings here uh, for the rest of the year. So um, hopefully uh, next meeting, it will be pouring um, and it won't be snowing and everybody will be able to get down here. Um, we'll try to have snacks. Um, <laughs> we'll try to have something to drink, um, but this is, uh, it's always uh, great to all be here together. Um, I wanted to, before we go too far, I wanted to introduce some of our, uh, our new board members. Um, most of you guys should might know me. I'm Dave Herod. I've been uh, with the Bee Guild for a long time and I'm the president this year. Uh, so I'm going to try to do everything I can to uh, make this uh, year successful. Um, we have a new board member here in Eric Schofer. So Eric, you want to? Uh, hi, I'm, I'm Eric. I'm a new board member. I've been a beekeeper for about uh, 10 years, and uh, I'm excited to be joining the board and trying to help out. Well, yay! <laughs> Welcome, Eric. Um, Alicia, I see you there. Do you want to say hi? Yeah, hi everyone. So I'm Alicia. Um, I am not a beekeeper yet, but I am somebody who has done some work with bees. Uh, I have an education in agriculture and sustainability, but I also have work in the restaurant world. So I'm kind of your halfway between. Uh, getting the word out there and being actually in the hives kind of person. So I'm excited to work with the guild and help everyone out. And of course, let me know if you ever need hands in your hive helping with anything, because I always like to get a little more time there. That's great. I see Carissa. Hi, Carissa. Say hello. Hi, everyone. How you doing? I'm so happy to be part of the Philly Guild, finally. It's been, it's been on my... Um, it's been on my radar, so I'm I'm happy to be here. Yeah, yeah. I I, I was uh, I picked up some uh, fondant that I bought from the Chester County Company, the Chester County Club. Oh, how did you get in? Oh, you must be a teacher. Okay. <laughs> anyway, um, uh, and and Carissa was uh, kind enough to bring the fondant from uh, Chester County, and um, she said. Do you have it? What do you guys do? You don't do anything. <laughs> so, <laughs> now, Carissa is here to help so us get the word out. So that that's right. Um, are there any other board members on the on the Zoom that I haven't called on or embarrassed yet? <laughs> I, I'm just the Zoom, Morris. I'm ignoring you. <laughs> uh, All right. So we've also got our our, our dear departed former president here. He's still with us in the flesh, but no longer a president, Norris Childs. Would you like to say a word or two, Norris? It was a lot of work for the last two years being president. I'm glad to turn it over to Dave. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And of course, Chris is here. Oh, hi. She's both here in person and <laughs> as a Zoom avatar. Do you want to uh, say hello, Chris? In Hi. stereo. Hi. Yeah, I'm gonna. If I talk, it's gonna. You better uh, turn off your mic. <laughs> yeah. And then sitting next to Chris is Mark Berman. Yep. Everybody's favorite board member. <laughs> if you need anything done, call Mark. I'll try. Yeah. That's great. All right. So, um. I think I'm going to 
you're going to go next, Taji. But I want Debreen and Charlie just to say a few words about Aubrey in general. And oh. then, um, that'll put uh, your work a little bit in context. So, Jabreen, you're here. You can start. Charlie, you have to turn on your uh, camera. There you are. Good, good job. All right. So, Jabreen and Charlie, what's this thing doing? Okay. Jabreen and Charlie um, last year uh, took on um, the uh, Sunday fun day responsibilities at uh, Aubrey Arboretum. And I just wanted them to say a few words about that. Hello, this is Jibril, my Lassara, and Charles, I can see is calling in. Um, I'm going to start by introducing say a little bit about the ministry I attended uh, since May for me, May 2022. Charlie was there before, probably. And uh, also talk about what we have experienced and which are uh, what are the issues with which we thought we would have uh, seen uh, arise there, and also which are some of the suggestions or questions we have uh, uh, from the events we attended. I mean, the fun Sunday. So, a little bit of back, a background. Uh, you know, I know the background doesn't have to be, have nothing to do with the volunteering. So for me, I I have I went to school in a French education system in Niger Republic, and graduated with a DSSS, which is a very I mean, what before masters. It's called DSS because a uh, diploma it teaches various specialty in French and in economics. And after that, when I, I immigrated here, I'm gonna go down. Do my job. For okay. I don't know what you're doing. Somebody can everybody mute if you're uh, not Charlie or Green. Thanks. Yeah. So I can I put it? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. So yeah. So I went to Albright for a business administration uh, degree, a bachelor in science. And I'm working currently for a uh, accounting and uh, financial management firm in Wayne, PA. It's not far from here. But I think it's close, straight from the office to come here. And Charlie, he probably would say I did, I could say something about Charlie's background, but since it's here, I think better you say it your, uh, yourself, right? Oh, all right. So I uh, might. Uh, uh, I'm an engineer, and uh, for the last 25 years, I ran a country a company that uh, designed and installed green roofs. Um, and uh, I wasn't keeping any bees then because I was too busy. Um, but I am now retired, and I am keeping bees again. Yeah. Thank you, Shelly. Our work, uh, I mean, what we did to help uh, since we are volunteers, and it was really to support the maintenance, uh, uh, the April maintenance, I mean, for them uh, to do the, some weeding and setting up my traps and clean up, cleaning up frames, etc. That's what we were doing when we go there every Sunday. And we were interacting with the public uh, for, the, for, like it was said before, for the purpose of educating the public, but be keeping the basics. For me, because I was I was also learning by uh, attending, so it's mostly that. And we help we are helping also with setting up the demonstration time, and uh, also the in person visit of the hives because some people were asking to I mean they were asking oh we also have the equipment for them to go to be able to go and use interact directly with uh, I mean not go to <laughs> interact directly with the hive but visit and see the inside of the hive. We open and they start to have our inside. We also uh, hand out uh, apiary promotional materials and honey samples for testing. And we did help with selling. We didn't do that you know, a lot at the apiary because you, you, have, you are busy doing all these tasks. At the same time, trying to be present when uh, the attendees were asking for money. So we were 
volunteers also for the honey uh, festivals on site. That was what we helped with as volunteers. So what have we, have we experienced uh, in terms of issues? It's, it's mostly the lack of uh, volunteers on site. We were really, uh, we, we didn't have enough people and almost every Sunday. I think Shirley agrees with me because we, we shared with the lack that you know, we needed really more people to help. And uh, I, I am, I'm very happy to say that with the new board and John um, just preached the message. He's not here, so if it says that I'm wrong. But with the new board, really, it's a good opportunity for people who want to join and help to uh, get in touch with him and yes, as he's the leader of this, the uh, FPA committee to help with recruiting uh, volunteers and uh, expand our pool of volunteers. Um, we also have uh, experienced uh, the issue with the high, I mean, when we called a friend for, to set up the demonstration hive, it was a problem. And People are really excited. They are really engaged. They, they want to see it uh, live. They want to see the, the bees live. But the problem we had is that how uh, can we do it in a way that it does not disrupt too much the, the hive? I, I witnessed many, many times, Charlie, going back and forth more than seven times once, more than seven times going back and forth opening, closing, going back, you know, just, it's just too much. And I understand when, when he says it's something we should address. How can we do this without disrupt, disrupting too much the, uh, I mean, the, uh, the bees in the hive? That's a question that's open for the researchers and, and it's open, you know, the answer. But we really think we, we, maybe we could do something else to improve it. And um, we also have uh, the access to the uh, hive because for the most part, the, the children and when they come with their families, they're, they're more excited. They're more excited to go and see what's going on. But we are lacking the suits. I know last year, uh, Charlie himself brought some, uh, he's gonna probably talk about for, for me, uh, he brought some suits for kids. We are, we are in, in need of more suits for kids particularly the kids, because they are the one who, when they stop, they are curious, and they not only engage with us, but they also make, make their family become important or interested, so forth. Um, that's the uh, issue. I know with the testing, uh, I am aware that uh, David, I did address some of the issues you were asking, uh, we were, I mean, uh, raising last time we exchanged email, which is the legal legal issues of uh, if we are authorized to uh, make, you know, to kind of hand out as, uh, honey to uh, test and honey samples. That's something uh, we need a, a certificate, I think, or so forth, and that was addressed. Just to continue that point, the samples we didn't have, like. Uh, shall we say, like, uh, we have samples, but they're not in, in um, you don't have the signage, you know, we, we are very have samples, right? That was addressed, right? So yeah, that's what uh, one of the issues. Uh, also, shall we, you put up, may I agree with you, shall we? I think uh, just to- conclude. What was, it? so a typical Sunday fun day, um, Jabri, what, what was it like? I mean, now I know that we didn't have enough suits and we don't have enough tasting and there's a lot of problems, but was it fun? <laughs> uh, I think it says some fun day. That's it's very fun. It, it's a lot of fun. You know, just to uh, speak for, about my own experience, uh, the reason why I was going and to, I was volunteering is really, uh, it's really to, learn, but at the same time to have fun. Yeah. And I really think everyone who came there 
the families, the way they were talking to us, engaging with us, the way they they kind of just see us, you know, like it's it's very uh, I would say it's very positive. I always come to the IPRE and live with the feeling of you know having pulled something you know, about myself. Yeah, you know, and I know a lot of people feel that way. So it's it's fun. Charlie, what do you think? Yeah, I think that, that Jabrin said it very well. Uh, uh, the, uh, the, first, uh, the, the neighborhood, first of all, feels like they own that park, you know, and they own that experience. So there's a sense of, of, of sort of being let into the uh, more intimately into what's there. And uh, they enjoy that. And the kids are curious. Um, you have to you have to kind of get them started sometimes with some questions, but once they get going, they've got plenty of questions. Uh, I think it's a very positive experience uh, for everyone. So yeah, I think it's worthwhile continuing, but I think it needs we need to think about how to do it, regularize it in a way that's uh, um, a kind of respects the needs of the apiary and also provides access and learning for visitors. And do you think it would be a good idea for people to join the apiary committee? I think that would be an excellent idea. I, you know, I mean, Jabreen and I were the only ones, and you, Dave, the three of us, occasion, occasionally Norris was there, but basically Jabreen and I were there uh, every Sunday and, uh, and it's, it's, it's enjoyable, but um, uh, we'd like to share that experience with other members of the guild. Yeah, my feeling is that when you're, keep, when you're doing the bees at Aubrey, you're sort of the star of the show because because the Sunday fun day is kind of like a, a it's it's kind of every Sunday is a celebration and every everybody there the goat people are there and the um all there's just a lot of people there the chickens and everybody but the the beekeepers are really the star of the show and if if you want to come down and really be a, a star um you you really should join the apiary committee uh, and uh, follow in Charlie and Jabreen's footsteps because it's a, it's a really wonderful feeling as Jabreen and, and uh, Charlie both said. So thanks well said. very much. And thank you, Charlie. And uh, we will be reaching out and asking you to sign up and, uh, and, uh, and then calling you if you don't. So you may as well just sign up the first time we contact you. Um, we have a very uh, exciting guest next is uh, my friend and yours, T.R. Now. And Kaji, set yourself up and we will put the camera on you. So, uh, I'll, be able to get out. I'll sit down. Okay. Oh, yeah. So, this be like, in the name of God, most gracious, most merciful. I'm always documenting. Uh -huh. So, we'll see the. My name is Tandy Brown Flaw, also known as TR7, and I'm an interdisciplinary artist. And I work through the mediums of video, <coughs> sculptures, installations. Simulage, paintings, and sonic music. But it started off as noise because I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> but it has grown into the actual music. So, uh, with that said, um, one of my projects I've been working on the last seven years has been around uh, Benjamin Banneker. Benjamin Banneker is an African American, um, the first, they say he's the first or the father of um, uh, Apollo Band. And part of his practice was astronomy. He was a farmer, naturalist, mathematician, uh, land surveyor, and in, he uh, published an almanac. And he had over eight or nine editions. And in those eight or nine editions, uh, he wrote about all those things that I just mentioned in terms of his skill set, but in particularly, he, what brings me to that uh, the April 
is he did a treatise on Indians in the 1700s. This is like 1780-1790. And in his treatise, he talked about the importance of the bees to the ecological system. Mm -hmm. So before the trendies of the 90s, he started getting with it, you know, having, you know, urban uh, beehives. He was telling us way back then. So with that said, in my uh, artistic practice, I have, I mm -hmm. take from Banneker's work and I delve into it and I try to bring different abstract forms from those different narratives. So <clears throat> how I ran into, I live in the area, I live like eight minutes from the um, Arboretum, literally. And I've drove past it all my life. You know, I've moved to New Jersey for a while, but practically never, never knew all that wealth that was on those lands. So I met Dave, did you say your name for me? Chris. Chris. At um, the Wick House, and they were doing something for the Rosebud. I went to the Rosebud mm -hmm. all the same. And uh, so I'm there at the Wick House, and I'm on the grounds, and I've never been on the Wick House, never all my life. Never been on the grounds, and I get on the grounds, and I'm like, they got a farm here, they got a greenhouse, they have bees, right on Germantown Avenue. So then at this festival, uh, Chris is showing me, you know, the bees, and why? So I say to Dave, I said, well, my last name is the bee in Arabic. Noho, Noho is Quranic Arabic for the bee. And the Quran states about the bees that um, that <clears throat> we have inspired the bee to build the men's habitations. So and we all we all here we all know how bees do. So way back then, and the Quran was revealed back in uh, over fourteen hundred years ago. And so, right there, it's in the sacred text of the Holy Quran, God has a whole chapter. <laughs> so, and as a teenager, I took on that name. My, my birth name was something different. And as a teenager, I took that name on, uh, my, my full name, Tandy Rose Law. And because I was always busy doing something, you know, you always could find me doing this or that. And it was always something that was productive, never anything destructive. And so I had an affinity for bees. And I wasn't Dr. Doolittle or anything. I had birds, I had dogs and cats. And I used to talk to them. And, and so I had one video, I don't think I have it in the mix here. When Once I uh, ran up to the bees in, um, in the Wick House, I gave them the greetings of peace. I said, Asalaamu Alaikum, peace be unto you all. Good to meet you all. So, um, from that experience at the Wick House, Dave tells me about everything that's going on at the uh, Arbor Meeting. And I get over there, and I'm like, and just like the, uh, uh, Dave was, say your name for me again, Jibreel. Jibreel was talking about the experience. You know, mine is like on steroids. So, um, and I was currently literally working on a band uh, another series for my Banneker project. And then I come across these bees. I'm like, I, I talked about the trees on bees like five or six years ago. I did a, a, a video and I talked about the bees five or six uh, years ago. And here I got some physical bees that I can engage. So this image here was me staging a, uh, an activation, an art where we call it activation when the artist engages around with the work. And then I took some of the, the stacks of the hives. And so I did a, like, a, uh, I used the, uh, the hive, the stacks of hives as if it was an outdoor uh, gallery. And I used uh, the stacks as plinths and then I put different sculptures on top of the different plants. And then in this picture, uh, this picture here, I took uh, 
just the stacks. And then I just placed them. And then uh, those tan or brown pieces are actual uh, uh, photostatic copies of the covers of a couple of uh, Banneker's almanacs. And then the, uh, those are bamboo shoots that's right there over top of the red one. And those bam for me, the bamboo shoot was representing the bees going out. Um, and inside the, over here to the left, I, mean, I should have had a point. Huh? Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, to the left of the screen on top of there, it's a, um, a glass uh, magnifying glass. And yeah. inside that magnifying glass is, uh, is a form where I was simulating a bee. And I take some fabric and I simulate the movement of the bees inside there, but it's a photograph. Um, so I just find different ways to engage. And in doing so, so Dave said, oh, come on, yeah. And I, then I was there one day and I seen all those stacks and behind the shed, I was like, what is all this stuff behind the shed? Oh, those are the hives. Hmm. You no, know, like Dave's hives. Dave, can I use those? <laughs> so I'm always doing it. So it was like, you know, I've had experiences where I visit other artists and I go into their studios and they have so much stuff. They have this stuff over to the side and they're not using it. And if I get a, see it and I get inspired, um, you mind if I use that? Or, I don't know what I'm using for, but I'm, it's interesting materials. You know, artists are always looking for materials, just like bees. They're always <laughs> looking for materials, right? So those stacks, those, they was all in behind. I'm like, yeah, let me pull them out. And I figured a way to utilize them. You know? So the project is called Monument for the Bees and Their Keepers. And um, where's my little light? So I actually have one more sure. Yeah, in fact, I'll we'll talk about the engagement. Um, I was there maybe four days a week for a good uh, month and a half, two months or something like that. And so it was always fun to get engaged. I get there, you know, at dawn, and, uh, and find my way to do something. Um, and you you were there on Sunday Fun Day with us too, right? I mean, the your the people love your work almost as much as they love the bees. Yeah. So it was fun. And then to the engagement part, uh, one day I was there. Um, so like a Tuesday. And I had my uh, synthesizers and keyboards out, and I wanted to do something where I was sounding off right along with the bees. So from that idea of sounding off with the bees, then I said, what I'm going to do this year, coming this year, is take what they have called contact mics, attach the contact mics to the hives, and then extract the sounds from the hives themselves and then run them through my uh, uh, sound system. So then I'm actually playing with the in insects, the, the bees themselves. So I'm really excited about, you know, juicing up for that, you know, hopefully maybe in um, April or May or something like that. That sounds great. Um, you want me to run one of the videos? Sure. Okay, which one? Uh, um, let me see, this is... I can never find my So person. one of the first uh, videos, and Dave enticing me to come to the uh, to the uh, uh, Arbory. Um, he sent me a video that he took in slow motion of bees in the swarm, and I was like, "Oh my God, that's <laughs> magic for me!" <laughs> so, which one do you want to start with? Um, let me see. B bomb, B bomb, B bomb. B -bomb. B -bomb. Yes. Okay, we're gonna have to. It might take me a moment to share this. So, okay. give me a second. So, here. of course, you know, a lawn next to um, is the field for for the with the flowers, all the different flowers, and they have their signage you know, that you know if there was a corn, corn something, and all the yeah, B bomb. Yes. So I got real close and. I pretty much I have no fear because you know, you know these are my brothers and sisters. So I just got right in there with my little iPhone and just slowed it down and uh, watched them work. 
not getting audio. I'm sorry. Let's That's see. Okay. I mean, in fact, it may not be an audio for this. Okay. Yeah. Oh, there it is. Yeah, it's just you there. Go. And so one day while I was there, I think it was like a Tuesday or Wednesday, the gentlemen that um, was, weren't just men, it was women as well, they were attending to the field. Group. And so I started asking them, like, what's going on here? Why are you attending to the field? And they explained to me that um, bees, they gravitate to certain plants more than others. And these are the particular plants that they gravitate to the most. And I was like, wow. So get into the science of that. <laughs> there's some honeybees in there too yeah and um so another scenario that took place is simultaneously and i like working simultaneously with other projects uh, so this cross-pollination, and I'm started using B language <laughs> in describing my work. So the cross-pollination that takes place. Um, I met uh, Rich and his wife, Melissa. I believe her name is Melissa. Rich that has the uh, flying saucer on the wall. Oh, yeah, yeah. The, the vetches. Vetches, yes. So I met the vetches. And Tanya. Tanya, Tanya and Rich. And they have a flying saucer that uh, Rich fabricated and it's on his lawn. And he did it for his children during the pandemic. And they wanted to do a theme party. And the flying saucer is probably about, say this tall off the ground and wide from where they are to about where I am. So you can actually get inside of it. So flying saucer, I'm doing the stuff around Benjamin Banneker. Then I'm going to the beehives and huh, maybe I can put Banneker in, uh, in the flying saucer, because he talked about space and astronomy, et cetera, et cetera. And I can be Banneker, and I can see myself as one of the bees, like, okay, I'm one of the bees, now I can fly into the hive. So I have another video, if we go to this next one. Yep. Um, and so this, this was a video I did back in the summer. Mm -hmm. So then I took, and this one here is called, Dan. Yeah. Oh, I think I was there. Here I am. Okay, pollinator. Pollinator. This one? Yes. Let's see if we can get it to just open here. Mm -hmm. So this one here, I took the original uh, footage and then I merged it with the flying sauce. Hmm. And this one does have audio. So we can get the audio. If I can, I will. So this first segment of actual footage with the beats in the background, that's from the swarm. So it's trying to find out why are you in Ireland? So these are technical, I'm checking So I thought was it was kind of prophetic that I'm going to it was all these bees 
And mm -hmm. then I run up on somebody who has a flying saucer who's also mm -hmm. a beekeeper. Come on, guys. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I get chilled every time I think about it. It's like I was walking to find and I was going to find pictures. Yes. There's one more video, then I'll be out to guys here. All right. Um, Ban, B A N. I, I can barely, oh, here, just, okay, I see it, I see it, I see it, got it. This is, we've got some work to do on our hybrid meeting presentation skills here. All right. So that statement was, it was blocked off there. Uh, some said he was three-fifths of a man, talking about family. However, or they said he wasn't even him. So the surmountable odds of a 18th century polymath that was an African American, the hurdles was huge, stacked against it. But he put naysayers to rest by publishing all his findings in his almond. It has been Hey, I'm got, I've got to stop and start the share again. I'm sorry to interrupt, but I, I don't think people were seeing it on the Zoom. Uh, Let's try it again. There it is. Okay, sorry about that, folks. This particular image was taken from uh, I was part of an art exhibition down at Cherry Street Pier, and uh, which I uh, uh, dealt with some um, banner boards. <laughs> Any questions? Anybody have questions? Can you do something with some? Yes. Thank you. Uh, 
I have a question. <laughs> we'll let the applause die down. Okay, questions? Um, I wanted to ask, do you, um, do you feel any identification with the term social labor we see of Afrofuturism? Because um, yeah, I've had a little bit of experience with that. Yeah, yeah. awesome. Um, especially with the, the space element, I was that was why I got to see a really a, a, some cool Afrofuturism work uh, this last summer. So awesome, thank you. Cool. Let me this see. gentleman over here. What's your name? Yeah, Austin. Austin. Um, yeah, really cool. Uh, and my question is, what um, like did you use any sort of micro chord or something for the like uh, second sound? Move, moves, move synthesizer, micro chords around, yeah, all this. Uh, and some of some of my synthesizers are vintage, and some of them are new. So I had some like electron stuff. If you familiar with electron, the company, Not okay. yeah, electron model cycle. Um, what else I have? It runs again. Uh, I have some circuit. What they call circuit vent. The idea of circumvent is you take something that's vintage and uh, you make it do things it ain't supposed to do. And I don't, I don't do circuit bending, but I have friends that do that, and they have done it too. I have a Yamaha CH CH10, which is a vintage keytar, and this guy is, you know, said, "Hey, you should have somebody circumvent." I've seen a little circuit bend. You put knobs on it and it makes it, you know, real staticky or whatever. And, it evoked a very like flying insect, flying spinning insect kind of feel. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Almost well, a little metropolis. There, there was a there was a group that um, was using this thing that they called the mini sprout, and they could attach plants and get sound feedback from yeah, it. Uh, and I, I haven't tried. I haven't tried yet, but I do know someone who has. Really? Yeah. Uh, in fact, I just met. She, in fact, the young lady's uh, Brad. I forget what Brad is. Brad, but she just came and did an interview with me uh, a couple of weeks ago, and uh, she's deep into that. And she's she said, you know, we're going to collaborate and we're going to teach you. So I'm always learning. So and, and another thing, it was something I wanted to ask Michael was uh, in your work. Um, there's a lot I would like to extract from what you did. Because uh, I'm like, I've read up on, I've read up on your life. I need some of that information to incorporate. Yeah. So yeah, I I I just when uh it didn't take me long to recognize the uh good fortune we had to to run into each other and and uh it was a. Uh, a real pleasure to invite you into the uh, apiary and to see what you did with it. It was uh, mind-boggling, and it remains so. So uh, I'm. Uh, I was. I think. Uh, I. I just. I love bringing something into the bee yard that was totally unexpected, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I hope that we can. Uh, maintain that spirit and uh, continue down that path in the coming year. So uh, again, it, it's been a real pleasure uh, exactly. working with you. Dave mentioned to me when he told me about the meeting, uh, I asked him about what happens in because when I came initially, it was like May or something. Mm -hmm. So I said, yeah, yeah, so what happens in the beginning? And he told me my head almost exploded. <laughs> I was like, Dave, I gotta be there. <laughs> well, you'll be invited. Yeah. Okay. Will you be doing more work with us this summer? God willing, yes. Any other questions for Tashi? Thank you so much. All right. Well, you switch over on the recording. It's almost going to start enough to do. Okay. Um, we're going to take, we have to stop uh, Zoom for just a second. We're going to go down and come back up, and uh, we'll be back in just a second. Just want to let you guys know, I'm shot at the front gate. It won't be locked, but I have to show you because it's close by eight.
Okay. Like if anyone does come behind and lock it, just look for uh, I and my wife will be poking around the building. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. So, um, what I need. So, Chris, why don't you stop recording for a second and I'll just start again, right? That's all we need okay. to do, right? Yeah.